Hello and welcome to Gina. In this video, we will be exploring Gina spawners more in depth by looking at spawn prototypes, placement criteria, spawn criteria, and much more. But before we get started, I'd like to mention that if you would like to learn more about Gina beyond this video, please refer to the documentation folder located in Procedure Worlds, Gina, Documentation. Moving right along, let's start by creating a Gina spawner that will be configured to spawn all kinds of trees along our terrain. So I'm going to delete the one that I have here and I'm going to create a brand new one by right clicking on the hierarchy, go to Gina and go to add spawner. Now upon creating a spawner, you'll be required to add a palette to it. A palette is a file that stores all of the references to the assets that you add to your Gina spawner. The palette helps to relocate asset references that may be lost when you move your assets around in your project window. So let's start by clicking on new and this will create a brand new palette that will be located by default in your assets directory. Now before we get into the settings, we must first understand what a spawn prototype actually is. A prototype consists of one or more physical resources that can be spawned into a scene. This can be in the form of terrain grass, terrain trees, terrain details, and game objects or prefabs. It's recommended to add a spawn prototype before you start configuring your spawner settings. That way we have more options depending on what prototypes we add to our spawners. In our case, we'll be needing to add a terrain tree prototype. So let's add one now. Down the bottom of the genus spawner, you'll notice a button called add tree. Select that. And you might be prompted to add terrain trees to your terrain before you actually add it as a prototype. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go to the terrain itself. I'm going to go to the trees option and I'm going to add a tree to this terrain. So go to edit trees, add tree, select a game object. And a tree prototype I have in my project is called terrain tree birch and add it to the terrain. Now that we have our tree added to the terrain, let's go back to our spawner and click on add tree again. And here we have our single tree that's added to our terrain. Now that we have our spawn prototype, let's take a look at some of the spawner settings that we can play around with. Now, before we start changing settings in our spawner, let's first see what our spawner can do with its default settings. Let's do this by holding down the left shift button and pressing the left mouse button to select an area on our terrain to spawn. And then we're gonna hold down the left control button and press the left mouse button once more. This will actually perform a spawn operation and we can keep doing this along our terrain to spawn more trees. Now we're ready to play around with the spawner settings to get the desired output. First off, I'm going to undo all of these operations and I'm going to play around with our range. So the range is how far from the spawner you wish to spawn the objects. You can also achieve this by holding down the shift and going up and down on the scroll wheel. As you drag up, you'll notice there's an also another value called this, the throw distance. And what the throw distance does is it will throw the object from the center point as far as you set it. In this case, I'm going to go all the way to about 62. Now, every time you spawn, it'll be randomly thrown that distance away from the center point. I'm going to undo all of these. Now I want to increase the instance count. So I'm going to go to the minimum instance count, which I'm going to set to 10, and the maximum instance count, which I'm going to set to 20. and perform another spawn. Now you can see the trees are spawning in a spread motion. You can also preview what the spawner is doing very closely by decreasing the time interval between spawns. There are different modes that you can use to spawn things. At the moment we're using the single spawn, which is the default one. It's where you hold control and you can click around this terrain individually to spawn things. But you also have the ability to paint a spawn by switching the mode over to paint. Then you hold control and you can paint along the terrain. If you wish to increase the distance between paints, 
you can change the flow rate to a higher value. This is in world units. You can also change the shape of the spawn by switching it over to a circle or a square. Next up we have the placement criteria which allows us to configure the rotation algorithm we wish to use along with various other scaling options. So organic spawns allow us to spawn in the center of the operation and it spreads out from there. If you want to spawn things more uniformed, you can switch over to every. You can have a jitter strength, which we'll be using a bit later. And you can make sure that you have the correct instance count so that you can spawn on every point in the spawn criteria. Now, seeing as though it's very uniformed, we can actually increase the jitter strength and this will randomize the locations. We'll look at the other algorithms later on. Let's switch back to organic and continue. Looking at our rotation type, you'll notice that the minimum and maximum rotation on the Y axis is set to zero and 360. This means that when you spawn something, a zero to 360 rotation will be applied to the object randomly. We can switch this mode over to fixed this will allow us to control what fixed rotation we want to have. In this case, our trees will be spawned in a single direction. You can also control this by holding down shift and clicking onto the terrain and dragging. One of the other settings you can control in the placement criteria is the scale. By default, you can control all of the X, Y, Z component scales at once by changing the minimum and the maximum scale that you wish to apply to the game objects. So in this case, it's going from negative 0.7 to 1.5. If you want the scale to be uniformed, you can set these both to one. So they'll all be the same scale. You can also have a wider range by changing this to 0.5 and 2, for example. So now some trees are much, much smaller than others. The other aspect of your spawn that you can control is the scale factor. In this case, by default, it's set to 0.7 and 1.3, and it will randomize in between. I'm gonna change this to have a wider range by going to 0.4 and 2. And if we spawn, you'll notice that there's quite, there's more of a range in terms of scale. So if we scale this around to let's say one, two, three, I have even more of a range. Might wanna spread them out a bit so I can see them. Yeah. There we go. You can also control the individual axes by unchecking same scale X, Y, Z and modifying them accordingly. The spawn criteria gives controls over various spawn rules that must be considered when placing objects in your scene. For instance, if we want, if we wish to spawn along a certain slope, we can hold down shift and while holding shift down, we can change the slope angle and you'll notice that it'll update with the settings. You can also go min max between a minimum and a maximum while also holding down shift. You can also turn off check slopes and we can just check heights instead. We can turn off check heights and we can also check collisions in between. 
Another useful option in the spawn criteria is the ability to check against textures on the terrain. Note this will only work for the terrain. So if you select check textures, we can choose which texture to check against. In this case, it's the grass and it will only spawn along the grass texture. You can also shift click to select different textures and you'll notice the drop down list will update. You can change the strength while holding down shift can see the updates on the textures. Another option is to check against a given mask. Uh, there are different types of masks that you can use. In this case, we're using Perlin Noise. So if we hold down shift and we move our cursor around, you'll notice it uses Perlin Noise to figure out where exactly we can spawn our objects. You can hold this down and mess around with the settings a little bit to see if we can find a good middle ground and it will, it'll spawn along this noise. Then you have another option, which is to check against billow, which is another type of noise algorithm. You can also check ridged. And we can also chuck in an image. This allows you to use an image as a mask for your spawn. Gina by default comes with a, a series of example ones. If you go into the procedure worlds folder, go to Gina, go to resources, locate the textures folder, and there is a masks folder within there. You can use any one of these masks for your spawn criteria. So I'm going to click and drag the colored arrow into this option here. And you can use the color picker to figure out which colors you wish to block out of your mask. I'm going to choose yellow and I'm going to increase the accuracy. As you can see, it's only isolating that color from the texture and we can spawn along that texture. Now that we've covered both placement criteria and spawn criteria, let's take a look deeper into the spawn prototypes. Looking at our spawn prototype list, you have the ability to change the success rate, the tree prefab you actually are spawning. And since everything works from top down, this will be the last operation that happens at the end of the spawn. What we're gonna do is we're going to attach a prefab to this spawner by going to our houses. I'm gonna drag a house prefab in, and this should spawn both trees and houses together. This is controlled through the type of the spawner, I'm going to leave it at random and show you what this does. This will spawn a random prototype between the tree and the game objects. But you notice how the scale is a bit off because of our last settings. So we're going to go back up to where the placement criteria is. We're going to switch it back to same scale and undo this operation, redo it again. There we go. But I don't want the houses to be scaled randomly. So I'm going to change the scale to one and one. And now we should be able to see houses and trees spawn together. Along with having our bounds detection on, it will automatically avoid trees spawning inside of houses. Prefabs have a lot more settings compared to terrain prototypes. We can snap to ground, we can conform to a slope, we can change the position modifiers and the rotation modifiers. You can also go to advanced settings to see more options. There's also the ability to override the spawn criteria. If you wish to not check collisions, you can tick check collisions and turn it off. This means that the house will not conform to the root level spawn criteria. As you can see, some houses are spawning within each other because I've turned that off. But if I undo this, turn it back on, then houses won't intersect each other. There you have it. Lastly, we have our advanced settings. These are just extra bits of control that you may have over the spawner. You can either check out the documentation or hover over each one of these values to see what they do. And there you have it. That's how you use a genus spawner.